graduates, please be seated. Everybody else can be seated too. <laughs> but they did a great job following instructions. Good morning, everybody. Great to see all of you here. I want to welcome the graduates, parents and families, faculty, trustees, staff, and friends. It's wonderful to have the opportunity to be here together again for our 90th commencement ceremony. And I think it's particularly wonderful to be able to do it back in our house. It's been a while. It's been a great year. It's been a year that wasn't always easy, but I think that it shows the ability to be resilient, to be dedicated, and to be good to each other. And certainly this graduating class has had some pretty amazing challenges to overcome. And you know, when I think about the fact that most of you have been here at school for an average of four years, and I think about the last three years, it uh, certainly wasn't an easy journey, but uh, I congratulate you on everything that you've done, everything that you've achieved. And uh, I know that you will have a, an incredible future with all of the skills that you've developed through these tough years. So, congratulations. I want to now introduce our two student speakers for this morning, Sarah Fleiss and Tianyu Ma. <laughs> Sarah from North Bergen, New Jersey, entered Curtis in 2019 and is the Jack Walden Fellow. She recently sang the roles of Despina in Cosi Fan Tutte, Monica in the Medium with Curtis Opera Theater, toured with Eric Owens in the Neue Liebeslieder with Curtis on tour, and premiered a song cycle by Tanya Leon with the Musical Fund Society and Curtis's Ensemble 2021. Prior to Curtis, she was a student at Columbia University and also participated in the Juilliard Exchange Program. Other roles include Pamina in The Magic Flute, Cherubino in Le Nozze di Figaro, and Anio in La Clemenza di Tito. Tian Yu from Zhenzhen, did I say that right? Good. From Zhenzhen, People's Republic of China, entered Curtis in 2019 and is the Dorothy Richard Starling Foundation Fellow. He has been a top prize winner in numerous international competitions, including the Sendai International Music Competition, the Menuhin International Violin Competition, the J.S. Bach Competition, the Andrea Postaccini International Violin Competition, and the Chicago Violin Competition. He has also performed as soloist with orchestras including the Royal Philharmonic, the Sendai Philharmonic, Webern Kamer Philharmonie, Stuttgart Chamber, and Yehudi Menuhin School Orchestras. He has performed as a soloist and chamber musician throughout Europe, Asia, and the United States, and Oceania, and has spent his summer studying at the Verbier Festival Academy and International Summer Academy. Please join me in welcoming Sarah and Tianyu to the stage. To President Diaz, Chair Fretz, Provost Gazaleas, the deans, faculty, staff, family, friends, and fellow graduates, good morning. It is such an honor to be standing before you as we celebrate this momentous occasion together. I am in disbelief that it has already been four years since I first stepped into the Curtis Institute of Music. As we reflect on our time here, 
The memories we have created together during these years have deeply inspired me. Those memories taught me lessons not just about music, but also about life. Sometimes I ask myself, what is life? <laughs> I tried searching on Google, <laughs> YouTube, Yahoo, ChatGPT, <laughs> Siri, Alexa. After four long years of searching, I finally found the answer. Food. <laughs> I found this answer in the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Our life in these college years is like the everyday food we eat, full of sourness, sweetness, bitterness, and spiciness. Without us noticing, we have been able to experience these tastes every day. Like right now, thank you to Curtis Cafeteria, and Dan Dan, and Dim Sum House, Samurai, Devon, Har. As we start to taste the food in the weekly repetition, we will favor some food over others. It is very natural that we will have some different palates just like in music, there are many different options for every different phrase, bar, and note. In the past, I have mostly lived under others' opinions. Thankfully, it helped and motivated my growth as a person and in music. However, it also impacted my self-value and self-confidence since I started ignoring my own opinions. It was one day when this subject was being discussed in a lecture that I attended, where Gary Lepov, a sports psychologist, simply asked the class, who likes pears over apples? This simple question deepened my thoughts. I gazed long at him in reverie. I started to realize how much these opinions of others didn't actually matter as much as I thought. So what if they liked pears more than apples? So what if we got rejected in an audition or a competition? Let us not forget our values, confidence, and respect for our own opinions. My dear fellow graduates, we have devoted countless hours to perfecting our craft, pushing ourselves to new heights, and protecting our compassion in music. The music we play is not just for ourselves, but for humanity. Let us be the messengers that bring classical music alive. Together, we can arouse curiosity in teens, motivate the youth, and touch the old. Let us remember that the quintessential reason to be where we are right now is to play music, enjoy music, consume music, and to savor its aftertaste. It is our perpetual duty to feed this music to every soul that calls for it. Let us trust our own musical instincts, our own voice, and our heart. Great music is only created shoulder to shoulder. Let us play and make the world a better place together. Thank you.
Provost Gazuleas, faculty, staff, family and friends, and most importantly to the class of 2023, it is such an honor to be speaking to you today. This day has been a long time coming for me. After six years of being an undergrad, I am finally graduating. My academic journey has been slightly unusual, which makes the fact that I'm speaking to you all today quite uncanny for me. I first learned about Curtis when I attended pre-college. Curtis was an enigma, something very far away and out of reach. Fast forward a couple years later, I made the decision to transfer after two years already in college, two somewhat unhappy years at that. I thought it would save me, that once I got to Curtis, everything would be all right, a sentiment I'm sure some of you share. <laughs> I quickly realized that the imposter syndrome I felt at my previous school followed me into the walls of Curtis, and that it would be up to me to figure out how to feel better. Although it sounds rather cliche, a big part of that process was asking myself, why? Not just why music, but why me? Why this life right now? In a competitive conservatory environment, I found it's quite easy to forget the why, especially in the first couple of years struggling through figured bass or trying to keep up in Dr. Chen's class. And being a singer where your body is your instrument, it's quite tempting to compare your, yourself to your peers, especially when you can hear them through the walls. <laughs> but this external stuff, the BS, dare I say, is only surface level compared to the real work that we have done and will do not only as musicians, but as conscientious citizens of this world. Think back to the first time you remember feeling you were meant to be a musician. That unadulterated joy of playing your instrument, composing at your desk, singing into the mirror. The sheer wonder of creating. Feeling something, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I cry a lot. It's really, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I do this literally all the time, so. <laughs> okay. um, feeling something bubble up inside of you and then hurl out like you weren't even in charge. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> feeling like you're a part of something greater than yourself. Thanks to the enabling of Dr. McGinn, um, I now have a breadth of quotes to pull from, including from the likes of Ralph Waldo Emerson. He stated, the sun illuminates only the eye of the man, but shines into the eye and the heart of the child. I urge you to find that childlike joy, the endless curiosity to create, express, inspire. When you leap from that place, the nonsense floats away. It's not about being better than, but finding the best version of yourself. That inner child that traveled wide-eyed through the world um, with hopes of the future and an unflinching sense of self. It's a scary world, one filled with a lot of unknowns, but we as musicians have the opportunity to explore this unknown in all of its shades and all of its beauty. My hope for all of you and myself is to find that joy not only within music, but in all areas of life. Because time flies. For God's sake, we're graduating already. <laughs> Speaking of, thank you to my friends, some of whom I'll be seeing next year, some I'll hopefully be seeing across the stage one day. Thank you for your talent, dedication, and the love that you already bring to your endeavors. I can only hope that we lead by example, and the rest of the world can do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Tanya. 
It is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished guest speaker, Maestro Osmo Vanska. Conductor laureate of the Minnesota Orchestra where he held the music directorship for 19 years and music director of the Seoul Philharmonic from 2020 to 2023. Maestro Vanska is recognized for his compelling interpretations of repertoire of all ages and an energetic presence on the podium, as many of you have seen from his time here with us. His democratic and inclusive style of work has been key in forging long-standing relationships with many orchestras worldwide. Performances of Mahler's Symphony of a Thousand, number eight, with the Minnesota Orchestra in June 2022, provided a fitting culmination for Maestro Vanska's tenure as music director. Together with the orchestra, they undertook five major European tours, as well as a historic trip to Cuba in 2015, the first by an American orchestra since the two countries reestablished diplomatic relations. They also made a groundbreaking tour of South Africa in 2018 as part of a worldwide celebrations of Nelson Mandela's centenary. Furthermore, the visit by an American orchestra, first visit by an American orchestra, drawing together South African and American performers in musical expressions of peace, freedom, and reconciliation on a five city tour. Maestro Vanska and the Minnesota Orchestra also made an acclaimed return to London's BBC proms in the summer of 2018. Osmo continues to develop a visiting and touring relationship here with us at Curtis, leading conducting seminars as well as tours, both in Europe and in the US. And he has also been invited to conduct the New World Symphony in Miami where he additionally coaches their conducting fellows. Maestro Vanska studied conducting in Finland's Sibelius Academy and was awarded first prize in the 1982 Besançon competition. He began his career as a clarinetist, occupying the co-principal chair of the Helsinki Philharmonic Orchestra. He regularly performs chamber music, having been invited to La Jolla Summer Fest, Seattle Chamber Music Festival, Nantali Summer Festival, Suzma Summer Sounds, and music in Ruovesi, to name a few. He has recorded Bernard Henrik Crusell's three clarinet quartets with Kalevi Ajo's and Kalevi Ajo's clarinet quintet for the BIS label, and is in the process of recording several duos for clarinet and violin, which he has commissioned with his wife and Curtis alum and Curtis faculty, Aaron Keith. Maestro Vanska is the recipient of a Royal Philharmonic Society Award, the Finlandia Foundation Arts and Letters Award, the 2010 Ditson Award from Columbia University, and the Pro Finlandia Medal awarded to him by the State of Finland. He holds honorary doctorates from Universities of Glasgow and Minnesota, and was named Musical America's Conductor of the Year in 2005. In 2013, he received the annual award from the German Records Critics Award Association for his involvement in business recordings of the complete, complete works of Jean Sibelius. Please welcome Maestro Osmo Banska. Thank you, Robert, uh, and thank you very much to at the Curtis Institute of Music for inviting me to be part of this year's graduation ceremony. It's an incredible honor for me to get this title from Curtis, one of the very best music schools in the world. The orchestra and I are about to embark <coughs> on our third tour together. And it's always very, very special and inspiring for me to work with these students who will, no doubt, be the world's musical leaders and the superstars in the years to come. A career in music <coughs> looks very different now than it did when I was in school. I won't embarrass myself by telling you how many decades ago that was. The rise of technology 
including social media platforms and YouTube makes it possible in this day and age to carve out a very individual and unique path. Professional musicians now need to be part promoter and part manager in addition to being stellar players. We need to be comfortable engaging with the audience, people in the community, board members, donors, and perhaps most importantly, we need to be spokespeople for our own art form. Honing one's craft is a lifelong process. The things that keeps me so engaged and passionate about music is that I'm constantly learning and evolving, whether it is from working with the best professional orchestras, best musicians, or the extremely talented students here at Curtis. You can learn just as much from your peers as from your teachers and mentors. And it's essential to always keep an open mind. Your fellow students sitting next to you today will be your lifelong colleagues. And what makes music so unique and wonderful is that while you come from different countries, backgrounds and cultures, you all speak the same common language. Making mistakes is also an invaluable part of the learning process. If I could have the chance to start my post-school career over again, I would do many things differently. Since we have many young, talented people here today, I'm ready to share my biggest regret in order to give you a chance to avoid doing the same. When I was starting out as a conductor, I had a big ego and felt like I knew everything there was to know about the profession. I f it felt like a waste of time for me to listen to someone's opinions about music, <coughs> interpretation or how to study music. Why did I need any advice about how to communicate with the players when I had my first chances to conduct an orchestra? Two conductors who were my teachers and role models were tough guys who were usually just angry at the players when something went wrong. It took too many years too many years before I even started to think that there might be a different way to behave in order to collaborate and encourage the players to perform at their best. I am embarrassed to say that I acted this way in front of many of the world's best orchestras. And in, res in, in retrospect, I'm not surprised that I was often not invited back again. <laughs> Today, I know much more about psychology and the mentality needed for a leadership role. I have come to realize that just because I am the one waving the button on the podium, it doesn't mean that I am necessarily any better or smarter than the people I am conducting. If only I had known that in my 20s. Um, in recording sessions, we have five takes, 15 takes, or even 75 takes to make one movement of music as perfect as possible. But in real life, we only get one 
It's very unfair. <laughs> Music is a resource for all of us, especially when we are going through hard times. It can comfort us and it can also give us some hope to keep going. I don't know about you, but that became even more obvious to me during the early days of the pandemic, when I was unsure when or even whether concerts would ever resume again. Because of that, I feel even more lucky and thankful to be here with you today in person celebrating this huge milestone in your lives. Congratulations on all of your hard work. And I look forward to seeing all that you accomplish in the years to come. Thank you very much. Doctor of Music on Osmo Vanska in recognition of services rendered to music, to mu music education in particular, and specifically to the Curtis Institute of Music. By virtue of the authority vested in me, the officers and members of the Board of Trustees of the Curtis Institute of Music hereby admit Osmo Vanska to the degree of Doctor of Music granting all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining hereto. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jean M. McGinn, the Ruth W. and A. Morris Williams, Jr., Chair of Liberal Arts and Senior Associate Dean of Academics, who will present the Landis Award. Jean? The Joan Hutton Landis Award for Excellence in Academics is named for Professor Emerita Joan Hutton Landis. Dr. Landis served as Chair of the Liberal Arts Department for 24 years and was an inspiring teacher, mentor, and avid supporter of young musicians' careers. Thanks to Dr. Landis's leadership, the study of great literature and art is a vital part of the Curtis curriculum. Students who took a poetry class or a Shakespeare class with Dr. Landis can attest to her inventive wit and intellectual gifts, and to the ways in which her extraordinary teaching broadened and deepened their lives as artists. Today, I am pleased to award the 2023 Joan Hutton Landis Award for Excellence in Academics to Emily Amos. It is my pleasure to now introduce Mr. Jonathan Coopersmith, the Chair of Musical Studies, who will present the Aldwell Award. Jonathan? The Curtis Musical Studies curriculum is based upon the very rigorous study of traditional musical craft. 
We believe that an intimate knowledge of the musical techniques as practiced by the greatest composers themselves brings us closest to their music. The Edward Aldwell Award for Excellence in Musical Studies, established in honor of Edward Aldwell, who served on the Curtis Musical Studies faculty for 35 years, is presented to a graduating student who has demonstrated outstanding ability and performance in musical studies throughout his or her undergraduate years at Curtis. It is my great pleasure to present the 2023 Edward Aldwell Award for Excellence in Musical Studies to Emily Amos. I would now like to introduce Ms. Mary Javian, the Chair of Career Studies, who will present the Provost's Award for Achievement in Career Studies. The Career Studies curriculum provides opportunities for Curtis students to build necessary skills in technology, pedagogy, entrepreneurship, and community-based projects, often in partnership with organizations throughout the Philadelphia area. It is my great pleasure to present the 2023 Provost's Award for Achievement in Career Studies to Hannah Colbreth. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Nick DiBerardino, Curtis's Senior Associate Dean for Performance Studies, who will present the Provost's Award for Outstanding Citizenship. Nick. Students come to Curtis because they want to become great performers. During their enrollment, they learn that who they are is every bit as valuable to the school community as what they do. The Provost's Award for Outstanding Citizenship recognizes a graduating student that has contributed to the Curtis community through their integrity, compassion, involvement, responsibility, and respectfulness. I am so pleased to present the 2023 Provost's Award for Outstanding Citizenship to Young Young Run. I would now like to invite Mr. Edward Casaleas, Provost, and the Guy and Lisa Lim Artistic Director, who will present the Milka Violin Artist Prize. Ed. The Milka Violin Artist Prize is awarded to a graduating violinist who is committed to participating in international violin competitions during the year after graduation. The prize is funded by Mr. Georges Markov Totevi and the Markov Totevi Foundation in, in memory of Mr. Markov Totevi's mother, Milka, who was a gifted teacher of young violinists for many years. It gives me great pleasure to present the 2023 Milka Violin Artist Prize to Tianyu Ma. <laughs> Now I'd like to invite to the stage Dean Amy Yang, who will present the Charles Miller Prize, the Angelo Silvestro Festorasi Scholarship, and the Mellon Prize. Amy. Created by and named for our longtime Curtis patron, the Charles Miller Award honors outstanding musicians through three established prizes. 
the Fritz Chrysler Award for Violin, the Sergei Rachmaninoff Award for Piano, and the Alfredo Casella Award for Composition. The award is given on a rotating basis to students who have excelled in these areas. And it gives me great pleasure to present the 2023 Sergei Rachmaninoff Award to Yao Yang Ren. <laughs> Silvestro Festerazzi Scholarship was established by the state of Marguerite Festerazzi to recognize promising voice students. And the Mellon Prize was established by the state of Marguerite Festerazzi as well to recognize promising piano students. It gives me great pleasure to present the 2023 Festerazzi Scholarship to Joseph Tancredi. <laughs> Joseph is obviously unable to join us today, but thank you for joining me in recognizing his achievement. Last but absolutely not least, I'm very pleased to present the 2023 Mellon Prize to Zhu Wang. Now, Dean DiBernardino will present the Presser Scholar Award. Nick. Through the generosity of the Presser Foundation, Curtis is able to recognize the outstanding achievements of a rising senior who exemplifies high academic and musical accomplishment, leadership, and citizenship through the Presser Scholar Award. It gives me great pleasure to present in absentia the 2023 Presser Scholar Award to Toby Vigneault. Please join me in congratulating Toby. <laughs> it's now my great pleasure to introduce Aaron Patterson, organ class of 22, who will perform Organ Point by David Byrd.
Thank you, Aaron. Mr. Bryan will now present the candidates for the Curtis Institute of Music Certificate and Post Baccalaureate Diploma. Will the candidates please rise? Mr. President, I present for the certificate and post baccalaureate diploma of the Curtis Institute of Music these candidates who have been approved by the faculty and the provost. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you this diploma, officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation in recognition of the honorable and satisfactory completion of your studies at the Institute. Ruby Dibble, Kansas City, Missouri, majoring in opera with Mr. Cole and Ms. Faulkner. <laughs> Sophia Mayakawa, in absentia, Kyoto, Japan, majoring in opera with Ms. Faulkner. <laughs> ben Schaefer, in absentia, Des Moines, Iowa, majoring in opera with Ms. McCaffrey. <laughs> Joseph Tancredi, in absentia, Bayville, New York, majoring in opera with Mr. Levini and Ms. Putnam. <laughs> Hannah Colbreth, in absentia, Noonan, Georgia, majoring in horn with Mr. Lang and Ms. Montone. <laughs> Natanel Bikoff, Petach Tikva, Israel, majoring in trombone with Mr. Harrows and Mr. Vaughn. <laughs> Changwon Park, Suwon, South Korea, majoring in bass trombone with Mr. Bollinger. Frankie Carr, in absentia, Oxford, England, Community Artist Fellow, studying with Ms. Javian. <laughs> Zachary I. Moitz, in absentia, Princeton, New Jersey, Community Artist Fellow, studying with Ms. Javian. Jacob Neiman, Plainsboro, New Jersey, majoring in conducting with Maestro Nese Seguin. <laughs> Zhu Wang, Hunan, People's Republic of China, majoring in piano with Mr. McDonald. Nune <laughs> Jin, Seoul, South Korea, majoring in cello with Mr. Hoffman and Mr. Wiley. Hamza Abel, in absentia, Jacksonville, Florida, majoring in timpani and percussion with Ms. Jung, Mr. Liuzzi, Mr. Milstein, and Mr. Van Seitz.
Griffin Ford Harrison, Rochester, New York, majoring in timpani and percussion with Ms. Jung, Mr. Liuzzi, Mr. Milstein, and Mr. Van Seitz. <laughs> The Viano Quartet, Hao Zhou, Lucy Wu Yu Wang, Aiden Mackenzie Kane, Tate Zawadia, String Quartet in Residence, studying with the Dover Quartet, Mr. Ashkenazi, Mr. Diaz, Mr. Steinhardt, Mr. Tenenbaum, Mr. Wiley, and Ms. Young. Will the graduates please be seated? Mr. Bryan will now present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Music. Will the candidates please rise? Mr. President, I present for the degree of Bachelor of Music these candidates who have been approved by the faculty and the provost and who have met the requirements of the State Board of Education of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. By virtue of the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees, I confer the degree of Bachelor of Music, admitting you to all the rights and privileges which pertain to that degree throughout the world, in token of which I present this degree, officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Elise Arancio, Tucker, Georgia, majoring in composition with Dr. Daniel Poor, Dean DeBerardino, Dr. Higdon, Dr. Holland, Dr. Kirsten, Dr. Ludwig, and Dr. Mackey. Emily Damasco, Glen Mills, Pennsylvania, majoring in voice with Ms. DeTrejo and Ms. Zajic. Sarah Fleiss, North Bergen, New Jersey, majoring in voice with Ms. Faulkner. Evan Gray, Winterthur, Switzerland, majoring in voice with Mr. Schneibley, Mr. Thorner, and Ms. Thorner. Dahlia Madofnikov <laughs> in absentia, Woodbridge, Connecticut, majoring in voice with Ms. Olin. <laughs> Olivia Smith in absentia, Penticton, British Columbia, Canada, majoring in voice with Ms. Falcon and Ms. Faulkner. Emily Dawn Amos, Alexandria, Louisiana, 
majoring in organ with Mr. Glandorf and Mr. Morrison. Christopher Oakley Martin, Atlanta, Georgia, majoring in organ with Mr. Glandorf and Mr. Morrison. Chong, Hong Kong and Macau, majoring in piano with Mr. McDonald. Nathan Lee in absentia, Boulder, Colorado, majoring in piano with Mr. McDonald. <laughs> Young Young Run, Fujian, People's Republic of China, majoring in piano with Mr. Liu and Mrs. Sokolov. So just a bit off script, but I will say that, of course, Mrs. Sokoloff had such a remarkable legacy here at Curtis. Young Young is her final student to graduate from Curtis. So. <laughs> William Young, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, majoring in piano with Mr. McDonald. <laughs> Maya Anjali Buchanan in absentia, Rapid City, South Dakota, majoring in violin with Ms. Kavafian. <laughs> Danny Yehun Jin, Seoul, South Korea, majoring in violin with Ms. Kavafian and Ms. Keefe. So Lee, Dejan, South Korea, majoring in violin with Mr. Bileman and Ms. Kavafian. Chen Yu Ma, Shenzhen, People's Republic of China, 
majoring in violin with Mr. Ashkenazi and Ms. Frank. Beatrice Chen, Chicago, Illinois, majoring in viola with Mr. Amory, Mr. Gazileas, and Ms. Huang, certificate in historical performance practice with Mr. Glandorf, Ms. Roberts, and Mr. Shellhasa. Chita Chen, Kaohsiung, Taiwan, majoring in viola with Mr. Diaz, Mr. Gazileas, and Ms. Huang. Jack Elliott Kessler, Miami, Florida, majoring in viola with Mr. Diaz and Mr. Gazileas. Choi, South Seoul, South Korea, majoring in cello with Mr. Bray, Mr. Hoffman, and Mr. Wiley. Sai Sai Ding, in absentia, Dallas, Texas, majoring in cello with Mr. Bray, Mr. Hoffman, and Mr. Wiley. <laughs> Jian He, Shanghai, People's Republic of China, majoring in cello with Mr. Bray, Mr. Hoffman, and Mr. Wiley. Yunsu Yeo, Seoul, South Korea, majoring in cello with Mr. Bray, Mr. Hoffman, and Mr. Wiley. Subin Lee, Seoul, South Korea, majoring in harp with Ms. Hainan. Luis 
Manuel Marquez Teruel, Maracaibo, Venezuela, majoring in bassoon with Mr. Matsukawa. James Vaughn, Champaign, Illinois, majoring in trumpet with Mr. Bilger. <laughs> Robert Conker, in absentia, Scarborough, Ontario, Canada, majoring in trombone with Mr. Harrows and Mr. Vaughn. Will the graduates please be seated? Mr. Bryan will now present the candidates for the degree of Master of Music. Will the candidates please rise? Mr. President, I present for the degree of Master of Music these candidates who have been approved by the faculty and the provost and who have met the requirements of the State Board of Education of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Music, admitting you to all the rights and privileges which pertain to that degree throughout the world, in token of which I present to you this degree officially signed and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Lucy Segrist Baker, Wilmington, North Carolina, majoring in opera with Ms. Faulkner. Hannah Elizabeth Klein, Concord, Massachusetts, majoring in opera with Ms. Faulkner and Ms. Hoffman. Marguerite Danielle Cox, Hudson, Ohio, majoring double bass with Mr. Meyer and Mr. Robinson. Martina Elizabeth Adams, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, majoring in horn with Mr. Lang and Ms. Montone. Jack David Bryant, Atlanta, Georgia, majoring in horn with Mr. Lang and Ms. Montone.
Will the entire graduating class please rise? I introduce to you the class of 2023. You have just become members of a very, very special group. I would like to now introduce our very special friend, Lori Sokoloff, who graduated here in 1966 as a flute player, who is going to do a welcome on behalf of all of our alumni worldwide. Lori? honor to be here, as it is a great honor to be an alumni of the Curtis Institute of Music. Uh, and it's such a welcomed and special occasion to honor my mother, Eleanor Sokoloff. Would all of you who studied piano with mother please stand up? sit down, please. Um, Mrs. Zimbalist always referred to my parents as her children, and I know that my mother felt exactly the same way about all of you who studied with her. Um, I have to tell you that the older alumni from Curtis made my childhood very challenging. <laughs> Despite working very hard, in mother's eyes, there was seemingly no way I could ever be as talented, as appreciative, as successful, and definitely not nowhere near as hardworking as any <laughs> of you. Six years ago, I had mother listen to flutist Marina Piccinini's dazzling performance of Paganini Caprices. Her singular comment afterwards was, now she practiced. <laughs> <laughs> Later this afternoon, uh, Darcy Marsh's film will present mother's history and accomplishments much better than I. So I will keep my comments on a more personal level. During mother's last decade, I spoke with her practically every day. It was a special and illuminating time. She told me many things, stories of her piano studies, her marriage to my father, and musical adventures previously unknown to me. So many amusing details, like my parents being invited by Bernstein to Tanglewood and sitting in his private box at the concerts along with someone she described as a not-so-great German composer, whose name she couldn't remember, turned out to be Hindemith. <laughs> <laughs> also, after every full and exhausting week of Curtis piano auditions, she took tremendous pride in the fact that even at her advanced age, she never even briefly nodded off, an accomplishment she asserted not all of her fellow colleagues could rightfully claim. 
Mother held very strong opinions and was outspoken. So many have opined to me that it was a gift of her longevity. It wasn't. She was always outspoken. <laughs> she was a feminist long before feminism was defined. Every director Curtis has ever had would tell you Mother complained frequently and vociferously about being the only woman on the major piano faculty. How enormously pleased she would be to have a teaching position chair named in her honor, a position defined to be held only by a woman, and how moved and happy she would be that this chair was created by director Roberto Diaz and largely made possible by her former student, Dr. William Horn. I visited Mother on a Saturday, which turned out to be the day before she died. As a small child, I remembered a delicious pastry she used to make exclusively for Mrs. Zimbalist every year. Mrs. Zimbalist used to call them love bugs. I was determined to make them for mother, as I sensed this approaching visit with her would likely be my last. It turned out to be a bigger challenge than expected. We were mid-COVID, and I had searched for days in vain for the essential ingredient, pineapple preserves. But fortunately, Amazon.com came to the rescue, and Jeff Bezos got them to me that Friday. <laughs> I had never made them before and hadn't observed mother making them for more than 60 years, but it had made a strong impression and I did my best. When I took them to mother the next day, she was obviously surprised and delighted. She took a bite and being the quintessential teacher right up until her last full day on this earth, leaned forward and said, do you want to know what you did wrong? <laughs> and of course, she was right. I know you are all aware of Mother's remarkable and unflagging 82 years of teaching at Curtis, giving to all of you individually and giving devotedly to the school as a treasured and beloved institution. She felt incredibly blessed to teach at what she considered the best school with the best and most revered faculty and the best and most remarkable students. But what is equally true is the multitude of blessings the school and you, the students, gave to her. Even those who did not study with her, she knew you from pouring your tea. She would often speak of you, your warmth, respect, humor, and kindness. And she celebrated your work and your every success. It is especially sad she can't be here today to join me in congratulating all of you who are newly graduating. When COVID came and it was no longer safe or possible for her to teach, her health declined rapidly. So I want you to know you are all so responsible for her living richly and joyfully to the age of 106. I hope you take that understanding with you today and also know how deeply grateful I am. Thank you. Thank you all.
Thank you, Lori. That was wonderful. Um, the only thing that I have to say about your comments is the fact that, you know, if it wasn't for that not so good German composer, <laughs> we violists really wouldn't have a whole lot to play. <laughs> so that says a lot. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank all of you who are graduating today for everything that you've done for Curtis and for each other during your time here. As I mentioned at the beginning, I realize that your journey these last few years has not been an easy one. It has tested all of us in ways that we could have never imagined and hopefully won't have to be tested in that way anytime soon again. But uh, your resilience, your good cheer, your support of each other and support of all of us at Curtis really means more than, than you can know. I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of the families, the parents, the siblings that are here today, because we realize at Curtis that their journey did not start when they got to Curtis. It started long before that. And we know that there have been many sacrifices that have been made along the way and will continue to be made and that means a great deal. I think that hearing about Ms. Sokoloff, you know, it really makes you think about the fact that your journey as part of this Curtis family is just starting. And think about it. Eleanor was here with us 84 years, 82 years. That's a lifetime. It's almost the entire history of this school. So, you know, some of you have heard me say that your friends, your classmates, are going to be your colleagues for the rest of your life. You will go through your careers in music at the same time and with them. And I hope that you realize that Curtis will always be here to give you the help, the guidance that you need, the support that you need. And I hope that someday we may see you in these hallways on a regular basis. Curtis, most of the faculty is Curtis. A lot of the administration is Curtis. And so I hope that you realize that you've become a part of this incredibly tight, wonderful group. So. I congratulate you, I thank you, and I wish you all the very best. Please teach and stay connected. Thank you. Congratulations. Would everyone please rise for the graduate recession?